Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to something a little different. I'm actually doing kind of a vlog style video. I haven't done one of those in a while. I just want to kind of show you guys what it's like to be a kind of full-time reseller to resell between the hours of basically 7.30 and 3 o'clock when the kids get home from school. I actually started my day around 5.45, got up, obviously coffee first, got the kids ready, dropped the kids off to school, and that brings us here to my storage unit. Uh, yeah, I gotta ship some orders, gotta take some stuff in. Let's get into it. All right, so first up, I've gotta grab all of this stuff to take into my storage unit. This is actually stuff that I've listed probably over the past couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, I haven't listed anything in probably five or six days. Went on a little vacation with the family, joined an amusement park, had some fun. And today's finally the day I gotta get back to work, unfortunately. So as you can probably tell, my storage unit is a little messy right now. It's mainly boxes. When you sell a bunch of different things, you have a bunch of different size boxes that you have to keep on hand. And honestly, I haven't figured out a good way to organize them yet. And lots of times they just get thrown in here like this. But yeah, there's my storage unit. You guys can see. I've got to put all of this stuff in there, put it in the inventory and then ship orders. So let me show you how I do that. So first thing is to get this laptop up and running. It's a Motel laptop that I got from Walmart for like 200 bucks four or five years ago so it's a little slow but honestly for what I'm using it for works great plug in my thermal label printer into my Jackery battery backup this is an MF label thermal printer they're like 60 or 70 bucks on Amazon I've had this one for I think three years now never had a problem an absolute beast works great highly recommend there's a link in the description if you guys want to order one plug that into the Jackery portable battery pack and this thing is also amazing but very expensive it'll run probably thousands of labels it'll recharge this laptop at least twice i take it home and charge it once a week connect the laptop to my phone through the mobile hotspot there it is there once i get connected i can print out orders and look them up and put in inventory and yeah let's uh, see what we sold so it looks like we sold 10 things for a total of 492 dollars and 44 cent that's not such a bad ASP. What's that? $49.24? Not too bad. I'll uh, kind of go over them real quick and show you what they are. All right, so first up, I sold this FS Perry hat. And I have no idea what kind of company that is. I don't even remember where I got this hat from, but I've had it for quite some time. Probably paid a dollar for it, and it sold for $15 plus shipping. Also sold this really cool National Mole Day t-shirt. Paid, I think, $1.50 for it from Goodwill, and it sold for $21.50. And then there's this vintage military wool sweater. These always do really well for me, especially in the wintertime. And you guys know it's getting a little colder out there. But you can tell what they are by the little tag on the inside. You can look up the number. I think I paid $3 for this one from a little mom and pop thrift store. And it sold for $31.50. So next up, got two pair of shoes or a pair of shoes and a pair of boots. These are FootJoy DNA golf shoes. And honestly, I don't pick up FootJoy golf shoes very often anymore. They tend to be slow sellers unless they're like really new models. And these are pretty new. These are FootJoy DNA. I paid $6.50 for them from Goodwill. Really good condition. And they sold for $30 plus shipping after a couple of months. And then this pair of Durango Rebel boots. And honestly, I probably should have looked up comps. I might not have bought them. But I paid $8.50 for them from Goodwill. And they sold for $34.50 plus shipping after, I think, about three months. Next up, a shirt and a camera. You guys probably all remember these big dog shirts from the 90s. This one's fishing themed, I believe. Paid $1.54 for it from Goodwill. And it sold for $21.95 free shipping after probably three months. And then this camera is a Sony DSC-W30. It is a six megapixel camera, which means your image quality is not gonna be that great, but people still want these things. I, I honestly don't get it. But I paid $8 for it from Goodwill, which is kind of paying up for a camera that you don't know if it's working or not, but it was working and it sold for 49 plus shipping after about a week. Only one golf club going out today. That's kind of unusual, but it's a Ping Zing Karsten putter. It does need a grip, so it's not in perfect condition. But I paid $10 for it from Garage Sale, and it sold for $40 plus shipping in about a week. All right, so next up, a great buy and a not-so-great buy. Can you guys tell which is which? I'll go ahead and just save the best for last. Let's start off with these Lisa Frank glitter mini stickers and tattoo stars. 
paid 94 cents a piece for them from Goodwill. I've got like 20 of these things and they've taken forever to sell. I thought being Lisa Frank, they would sell pretty quick. No, the modern stuff just doesn't sell as well as the vintage stuff. And uh, yeah, I've had them listed for $17 and I've taken almost every offer that's come in just to get rid of them. These sold for 12 free shipping. So not making much money there. But these guys, the DVD series from Lovejoy, the BBC video series, yeah, I paid $2 for it from a garage sale a week and a half ago, and it's already sold for $115 plus shipping. So definitely be on the lookout for Lovejoy and these BBC video DVD sets. Definitely a great buy. All right, so everything's boxed up except for one thing, and that's this military sweater that I've still got to ship. But I thought that would give me a good chance to show you guys some of the products, some of the things that I'm using to, I guess, run my business. Some stuff that I think really comes in handy. First up are these gallon twist tie bags. They come from Walmart. They're 100 bags. I think they're like $3.50. I absolutely love them. Every clothing item that I get, like this pair of pants, when I put them into the inventory, I'll put these pants into the poly bag and then into my bins. That way they're ready to ship. I just put them in another poly bag and yeah, they're ready to go. Speaking of poly bags, that's what I'm gonna use for this swole sweater because these aren't quite big enough. And for poly bags, I'm using a company called Jai Aero Pack. They seem to be the cheapest that I've found. Not to mention you can get an extra 10% off if you use my code Flippy. They've got some pretty cool stuff. They've got different colors and patterns that you can get. They've got poly mailers bubble mailers, different little gift boxes, all kind of stuff. Definitely check them out. Like I said, 10% off with code Flippy. Also another handy thing, this guy, this is actually a cardboard cutter. You guys may have seen me use it on that ping golf club while ago. I've used this to cut down the edge of the boxes because I'm a klutz and I tend to cut myself a lot with this thing. So I try to use this as little as possible, but with this, it's not really sharp. It just kind of solves through cardboard like that. And speaking of cardboard, I also use this cardboard resizer. Use that on a pair of shoes just now. I'll put a clip of it up here. But basically, if you got a box that fits perfectly with the width and length, but it's too tall, use this thing. Scores the edges, gives you a nice clean cut. You can fold it down, makes a nice box. And speaking of boxes, or at least the boxes that I buy, I'm using a company called Corrugated Containers or boxes.com, B-O-X-S. They're the ones that supply me with all these golf club boxes. And for me, they are a convenience factor. They are very close to me. Like I can be there and back to my house within an hour. And typically when I call, they'll have the boxes ready for me in 30 minutes. So they're definitely, they're definitely handy, definitely convenient. And their prices are pretty comparable to Amazon. So if you're in the Southeast, I definitely recommend check them out. They do do some delivery. I think you have to meet a certain amount but they're so close to me, I typically go pick them up. But as far as these boxes go, these boxes that I don't buy that I get for free, yeah, they all come from my neighborhood. I actually made a neighborhood Facebook post a while back and saying that I needed boxes that if they wanted, people wanted to recycle, they could send them to me, I'd reuse them. It would help me out, help them out, helps the environment out, that kind of thing. Yeah, I get boxes almost every day. You guys can see all the Amazon boxes in here. My neighbors really like Amazon and Chewy, apparently. But either way, it's really convenient. And last but not least, bubble wrap. I usually get a two foot roll and a one foot roll, two of each, and I get those from American Bubble Boy. I mean, it's two day delivery. If you're forgetful like me and always wait till the last minute to order, they're definitely a good source. But uh, yeah, let's get this thing shipped here and I'll show you what I'm using to actually print the label. Almost forgot my little Accutech scale here. I've had this thing for probably four or five years. I think they're like 30 bucks on Amazon. I just ordered another one to have for home. So definitely pretty handy and it's got the little remote thing. So if you've got a heavy box on the scale, you can just kind of move this off to the side and still read it. But yeah, the military sweater weighs one pound, two ounces basically. So to ship this package, I'm actually not using eBay. I'm using a website called Pirate Ship. And the reason that I do that is so that I can get credit card points. I've got my credit card linked to Pirate Ship, and I use the Chase Inc. Business Preferred because that gives me two times points on shipping. Basically, for every dollar that I spend on shipping, I get two Chase points, and I usually transfer those over to Hyatt. I did a whole video on it. I'll put a screenshot of it up here, link in the description, that kind of thing. But Hyatt gives you hotel rooms for really cheap. My wife and I are going to Charleston this weekend. We're staying at a hotel in Charleston, South Carolina for only 8,000 points a night. I also use the credit card for everything else that I buy in the business. So it definitely adds up over time. 
but yeah pirate ship once you link it to your ebay account you basically just click on import from ebay and you'll see the only thing that i've got left is this military wool sweater so we're going to do go to get rates it's shipping in a bag that bag is 12 by 12. it was one pound two ounces and you can see that it allows you to do signature confirmation insurance qualifies for media mail a regular package all the stuff that ebay also lets you do and this is actually going through customs so once you fill everything out do the get rates it tells you exactly everything that ebay does honestly and it's the same price like ground advantage 785 you can switch to ups for 11 dollars 13 more you can see the complete breakdown here we're going to go with ground advantage for 7 dollars 85 and like i said it's the same prices as ebay from what i've found this is just a way to let me use my credit card to benefit you know stuff that i'm already paying for anyway so we're going to print that label it pops up and oddly enough the one that i picked to show you guys is got to go through custom it's going to a military base but either way pretty simple all right so i got everything packaged up ready to ship over here but i've also got to put all of this stuff in the inventory it's only about 8 30 now post office doesn't open yet it's only like five or ten minutes away so i'm gonna spend a few minutes and put some of this stuff in the inventory I'll show you how I do that. First, I'm going to grab this guy here, this Villaware Prego Pizzel Baker, non-stick. And it's gonna go on that shelf right there. You can see that it says A3. So basically, I'm gonna go back to my computer, my active listings. We're gonna search P-I-Z-Z-E-L-L-E -E, because that's what that thing is. And also, it's kind of a bolo. These things sell pretty well. And it's this one in the box. Custom SKU was that shelf number. A3. Submit. And it's saved. So now when it sells, it'll pop up as a custom SKU. A3. I can turn it around and find it on that shelf. So clothing, I'm kind of going to do the same thing. I pulled off a random bin from over there that felt pretty empty. This is bin F. As you can see, it's pretty empty. We're going to put this Haunted Mansion t-shirt into inventory. I'm just going to put it in one of these Walmart bags. I'll close it up using one of these thank you stickers. And then we'll go to the computer and I'll show you how I put that in. So back to my eBay active listings page. I'm just going to search haunted because I don't think I have too many things listed as haunted. And there's two. There's one Haunted Mansion t-shirt that's already in inventory. It's F101. I actually just put that one in there so I know I can actually use F102. Shift F1. O2, click submit. Like I said, that's actually saved into the listing. So when it sells, it actually pops up. So that I know that's going to be in bin F. And I'm just going to write 102 on here, really small. And that's going to be pretty easy to find when it sells. As you can see, I've got quite a few more things to do. But I'm going to get on that and we're going to get out of here pretty soon. I still got to go to the post office when they open. So I almost forgot. I showed you guys the shelves. I showed you guys the bins for the clothes. I also have a bin for hard goods or at least smaller hard goods like this Mike Hammer DVD set. I can go back into its custom label, put in bin number five, put it in bin number five, and we're good to go. When it sells, I know exactly where it's at. Also, you've probably already thought about because you guys are way smarter than I am. Why doesn't he just take one of these bins home with him? And while he's listing, he could put the custom skew on it then, put it in the bin and he'd be done. You just have to put the bin on the shelf and that absolutely makes more sense. But the problem is I just can't remember to take one of these home with me. So yeah, I'm kind of stuck with what I got here. So as you can see, my F bin's pretty full. So we're gonna put the top on it. I also put some hard goods on the shelf. Got everything off of that cart that we brought today. It's in an inventory. Got all my stuff going out. It needs to go to the post office. It's loaded up. So we're gonna to go to the post office. It's 922, it's finally opened up. And they're gonna stop at two more places that I think you're gonna like. so packages are dropped off I also checked my p.o box and got a package that i forgot about something that i ordered that you guys actually might be interested in so i'll get in the car and show you what that is so the 
this was in here not exactly legal but either way uh, this is a package that I got off of whatnot and not something that I sold on whatnot but something that I actually bought on whatnot paid $13 for it and it is a it's a Sony digital camera it is a Cybershot 7.2 megapixel it is model DSC W55 I'll throw some comps on the screen I can't remember but I actually bought it to resell now it is a risk because I don't know if it works or not but I think it's worth the risk because I'd pay $13 at a yard sale and uh, everything's here so got the battery the charger and even if it doesn't work I can sell it for parts I can sell the charger separately if I don't need one but either way $13 for that you guys sold a comp so not too bad. I've been doing a pretty good bit of sourcing on whatnot, kind of like while I'm watching TV or laying in the bed. This actually came out of a storage unit, so the guy that was selling it doesn't even know if it works either. So, but yeah, thirteen dollar risk. We'll test it when I get home. It's uh, I'm sure the battery's dead, but we'll try it out later. So I just remembered that this car actually has an AC charger or AC plug here built in, so I can actually charge this while I'm riding around. And when I say riding around, I mean going to two thrift stores because there's two really close to the post office. And I'd kind of be dumb not to go and see if I could find some stuff to flip. Holy cow, that's really heavy, but also really cool. I don't see any marks or anything, but I might pick that up anyway. That's neat. All right, so I dug through a little bit of everything and that's kind of what you have to do at this store. You kind of got to dig because you never know where you might find something like this paperweight was in the DVD and CD section. And honestly, I don't see any markings on it, so it may not be worth anything, but it is super heavy. I bet you this thing weighs four or five pounds. Got the fish in there. I just think it's really cool. Some paperweights can be worth a crazy amount of money. This is one of those places where, like I said, you got to dig and you never know what you might find. Like I came in here the other day, of course I wasn't filming. It was a rainy day i decided to stop in and they had a box of electronics guy sold me the whole box for 30 bucks had some random blackberry phones and stuff that weren't really worth much but it had a ps2 with the controllers and cables and everything and also two random n64 controllers that were basically brand new so you never know what you're going to find but uh today just found a paperweight got a goodwill right around the corner though so let's get over there all right so i spotted this bear from across the store if it's what I think it is, and it's not. Well, maybe. It's a Build-A-Bear. So the one I was thinking of was a Build-A-Bear with uh, pumpkins. But this looks like candy corn. Let me see if that's worth anything. So it looks like the Build-A-Bear candy corn only sells for like 15 or 20. But what I thought it was, was the Build-A-Bear kitty. The pumpkin kitty. And I mean, you can see comp there. 139, 170. And let's see, 175, 180, kind of crazy. So definitely be on the lookout for the uh, Build-A-Bear pumpkin thing, kitty. So unfortunately I got nothing. I got kind of excited about the Build-A-Bear when I saw it from far off, but I didn't even have the right animal and the one that's worth so much is orange. But uh, somebody posted that on Instagram this morning and I kind of remembered it, so got a little excited. But I just remembered also that uh, I have to go to UPS to drop off that golf club. So I'm actually going to go to another thrift store first, take you guys along with me. It's a little small one, so uh, I've had some really cool stuff in there sometimes, so you never know. I found this book, but uh, honestly, if you have that problem, do you have the time to read that book? Well, I mean, I guess if you're sitting on the toilet, that'd be a good read. I don't know. Interesting. We got the Logitech Ergo K860 keyboard in good condition. Not bad for two bucks, especially with the dongle. And there was only like 23 listed and 60 something it sold. So it should sell pretty quick. And you guys see the comp should sell for some decent money too. Not bad for a quick 10 minute stop. But now I gotta go to UPS and right next door is one of my favorite lunch places. So it's 11:19. should be perfect timing. All right, so package drop off complete. My favorite lunch spot isn't the house of pizza. It's not the friend's house. It's actually Publix. I, I, I come here probably way too often, but they honestly have the best subs. Better than Subway, better than Jimmy John's, better than Jersey Mike's. It's my opinion. You can leave a comment down below if you disagree, that's fine. But you Florida people, you probably already know all about these subs. They're, they're pretty awesome. All 
right, sub acquired. It is 1140. I'm running out of time to uh, get stuff done before the kids get there at three, but uh, got my sub. Let's go home and eat it. So I was gonna do this cool transition where I hit the uh, camera with a sub and then like pull away and the sub's already unwrapped and sitting there in all its deliciousness. But uh, remember earlier when I told you about, I made a Facebook post in my neighborhood Facebook page about needing boxes. Well, I literally just got a message as I was pulling into the neighborhood that a lady has some boxes for me. So I'm gonna swing by, she put them by her mailbox. I'm gonna grab them on my way home. I mean, how convenient is that? Yeah, I'll grab them real quick and show you what I get. Well, that's pretty convenient. A nice stack of clean Amazon boxes already broken down and a variety of sizes. Pretty awesome. I'm not really sure why I wanted to do the spinny chair thing other than it was fun and I've kind of always wanted to do that. So uh, thanks for watching, I guess. But either way, it's uh, 12.30 now. I've got like two hours before the girls get home which is basically kind of when my work stops. Got to help with homework, cook some supper, got to run some errands tonight. So let's see if, how much we can get done. But first I do want to give you kind of an office tour. This is where the majority of my work happens other than at the storage unit, which you've already seen. I'll kind of show you around real quick. I mean, it's obviously not real big, but there's a lot of stuff that comes in and out of here. And it is a mess right now. Um, honestly, it stays a mess because there's so much stuff coming in and out of here, but let me let me show you around. All right, so as you can see, this is obviously my listing station. I've got three LED panel lights, and honestly, they're not the brightest lights in the world, but they're really cool because you can adjust them. You can move them up and down, back and forth, twist them, however you want to do. My buddy Anthony actually posted these on Instagram, and as soon as he did, I just thought they were really cool. I snatched them up. They're pretty cheap on Amazon. And then I've got a shelf on either side of the listing station. That is actually for incoming inventory. That's basically my death pile. But once that stuff is listed, it goes here. And then this stuff goes to my storage unit. And that's why this is a little emptier than the other ones because of all that stuff that I took to the storage unit today. And then as you can see, I've got a bunch of bins up here. And this is basically all whatnot stuff. A bunch of t-shirts in here, even though it says hats. That's going to whatnot. Random garage sale going on this week. Got a vintage Taz from 1996. Got a figment mug in here, some DVDs, even some Jeff Gordon socks. I mean, that if that doesn't make you run fast, I don't know what will. But yeah, all that's going to whatnot. And then Christmas ornaments going to whatnot. Hats going to whatnot. So hopefully all that stuff will be blown out pretty quick on whatnot. The rest of it, eBay. Speaking of eBay, I haven't listed a single thing all day. And if I don't list it, it certainly can't sell. It just, that death pile just keeps getting bigger. So I'm going to list a few things. I want to start with golf clubs because the season's almost over and it's going to start slowing down. So I need to clean some golf clubs real quick. I'll show you how I do that. That's probably one of the most requested things from you guys. So I'll show you that real quick. And then we'll list some. Actually, I just thought about that camera in the car. It's still charging, the one that I bought from Whatnot. So let's go grab it, test it real quick, and then we'll clean and list some golf clubs. And I'll show you how I do that. This video is definitely all over the place, but honestly, that's just kind of how I am. All right, so camera required. I don't expect this thing to have a whole lot of charge, but maybe a little bit, at least enough to test it. So there's also a memory card in here, which is always interesting to uh, look at other people's photos. Leave me a comment down below. Have you ever found, hey, look at there. Have you ever found anyone's uh, incriminating photos or anything weird on one of these cameras? Let me know. And basically how I test it is I just kind of hold it up and make sure that it'll play it back. 20 minutes later. Oh, there it is. This little tiny button right here. That's the play button so I can see what pictures are on there. There's the one I just took. So uh, yeah, we're going to say that works. And I'm going to look at people's photos on here. There's bananas. Interesting. Some interesting photos for sure. I don't think I'm going to share though. Let's clean some golf clubs. All right, so I got these TaylorMade R7 XD irons from a garage sale like two weeks ago. You guys may remember them and know I haven't listed them yet, but I paid $15 for them and the comps are, well, I'll just throw some comps up on the screen. They're, they're pretty good. But basically you need three things to clean these. One, you need a wire brush like this. Uh, I think I actually paid a dollar for a three pack back when Dollar Tree was actually selling stuff for a dollar. And then I've been using these golf erasers recently and I really like them. You don't have to use them for sure, but they definitely finish off the clubs, give them a nice shiny appearance. 
got a kind of a rough side on one side that knocks the dirt off and then this kind of polishes it off. And of course you need a towel to towel dry. If you don't dry them off, especially clubs that are black, you'll see water spots on them and it doesn't make for a really good photo. All right, so this is really pretty simple. You want to start by wetting the club and I'll turn this off so you can hear me. You want to rinse that off a little bit too. And basically you just scrub in the grooves just like that. It's going to clean all that dirt out of the grooves. Make that white nice and white. You can see on the inside there that white's starting to show a little bit. Also the bottom where the P is. The inside here just a little bit. Knock some of that dirt loose. Rinse it off again. And you want to take your golf eraser and just scrub it. And you can see instantly how white that white got like really quick. That to me just kind of helps it stand out, especially in a photo. I just want to wipe it down all over. Rinse it off one last time. And like I said, you definitely want to dry it. Get all those wet spots off of them. And you are ready to go. Now it's time to take photos. And obviously they're not going to fit on that listing station that you saw earlier. So I'm actually using my kitchen table. In order to do that, I've replaced all the bulbs in the chandelier with I think 5000K ultra bright LED lights. They're pretty cheap from Lowe's or Home Depot. Apparently I need to go buy another one. I just noticed that one is out. But that gives me plenty of light to be able to take photos on this nice wooden table on this wooden background and makes for some pretty good pictures or at least I think it does. Use it for golf clubs, flat lay clothing, anything large really. Alright so listing photos are done and I gotta be honest I'm old so I'm still using a computer to list all my items. I just can't get on board with the phone thing. I'm really slow at it. So when I take a picture with my phone, this is the Google Pixel 7 Pro, it automatically uploads those photos to my Google Photos account. So they're on my computer and basically I can click on them and edit them and tweak them or whatever I want to do before I download them and put them on my listing. I'm going to list these TaylorMade R7 XD irons, I think for around 200 plus shipping. The closest comp that I could find was this one that sold for $269, but that one actually has two extra clubs. But either way, not bad for a $15 investment. So I got the clubs listed along with a few other clubs, the camera that I bought from Whatnot, the keyboard that we got from the thrift store, and then like five or six other things. I actually kind of got into a listing groove and forgot the fact that I was filming a video. So it's actually the next day, which is okay because I've actually sold the keyboard and the camera already. Both sold overnight, which is really cool. But this has just been kind of a day in my life and I can't really say typical because there really isn't a typical. The stuff that I did today, some listings and some video editing was totally different than what you guys saw me do yesterday, going to thrift stores and shipping and doing inventory. And even tomorrow I'm going to play golf and look at a bulk buy, so that's totally different. That's kind of the beauty of reselling. It can be whatever you want it to be. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully you learned something, even if it's what not to do. We'll see you next time.